Hey YouTube, so I haven't made a video in uh, a long time. I don't even remember the last time I made a video, but um, I'm working on a custom order right now, which is a teapot. So I thought I'd take a video and show you guys how to assemble your teapot. This teapot that I'm making is um, a Beauty and the Beast inspired teapot. And I wish I could take credit for this idea, but I can't. Uh, a really lovely young woman named Janelle contacted me a few years ago and she loves teapots and she loves Beauty and the Beast and she was having a Beauty and the Beast themed wedding and she contacted me about making a Mrs. Potts themed teapot that she could use a, as a guest book at her wedding. So that's what I did. And <clears throat> so I made it and I never thought anything about it. And then she ended up putting it to her Pinterest and it's been repinned something like 150,000 times like crazy so crazy I'm so thankful forever for Janelle um, but so I've gotten more orders as time has gone by for this particular teapot so it's a little bit more involved than a usual teapot because I throw multiple pieces so I have a body for the teapot I trim it round because I have a base that I throw for it that I attach a spout, a lid, and a knob. Um, so here are the pieces. When I make spouts and knobs, I always throw multiples in case one gets messed up, but these are the ones that I'm going to use today. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the base to the teapot. So um, let's see. I have a needle tool which I'm going to use to slip and score. Um, if you're watching a video about assembling teapots I'm assuming you already know what slip and score means. So I'm just going to slip and score right there um, and then I'm going to slip and score the base where it's going to be attaching. And I just kind of place the base on when I was trimming this I um, used my noodle tool to make a circle on the bottom so I would know where the center of it was um, so once I just set this down it leaves a mark on the base so I know where to score right here And then I just get some slip and I'm gonna put it here and I'm also gonna put it on the teapot bottom too you want to put it on both you don't really need that much um, it just kind of acts like the glue to hold the pieces together Alright, so I am pressing it on right now and I'm going to come on the inside and I'm just kind of smoothing it with my finger on the inside and I have a foam brush and I'm going to use that on the inside too to really smooth that seam. And then I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to use the weight of the body of the teapot to press onto its base. Okay, so next thing, my studio is crazy messy don't even look at it I don't even want to talk about it it's crazy all right so now I use the weight to press it in I'm just gonna flip it over and use my foam brush again to go back into that crease 
and clean up the slip that may have squished out while I was attaching it. Okay, so my base is attached. And the next thing I want to do is attach my spout. Um, I'm going to change my camera angle because I want you to be able to see close up for that, okay? Okay, so now I'm going to attach my spout. Um, this trick that I'm going to show you, I wish I could take credit for it, but this is actually um, a tip that I picked up from watching videos on YouTube made by Tim C. S. E. E. So if you are looking for good pottery videos to watch, I would really recommend Tim C's channel. He's got lots of great tips. So I used to cut a hole out when I would attach my spouts. Um, and that made things kind of difficult for cleanup because um, it was hard to get inside and clean up the cut on the inside where the spout was attaching. So this is a much cleaner way to do it. So I'm kind of just eyeballing where I'm going to want my spout. It's going to be right here. And this is a cake decorating tool. I bought it at Walmart in a set. It's great. Um, this one is just round on the end and I use it just for this teapot that I make. Um, I use it when I make this ruffly lid and I use it when I do the spout. So what I'm doing to make the area for the spout is I'm just tapping. So I make a circle. So this is the start. So. I keep tapping, keep tapping, and what I'm doing is I'm just slowly pushing in the wall. So I think for the most part, the people that order these teapots from me um, just use them for show. You know, they use them as guest books or whatever, and then they sit on a shelf but if they ever did want to use them for actual tea, they are 100% functional. You see how that is starting to cave in? And once you get a good area done, you can kind of start using this and pressing in rather than tapping and kind of moving it around some. Okay, the other thing that's great about doing it this way is that if you use loose leaf tea, this becomes a strainer on the inside because if you can see, see how it's popping in on the inside right there? Um, so since it's curved, any tea leaves that would go to the spout then get pushed away from that curve so it's like a natural tea strainer almost to it so that looks good I'm just gonna clean up around it uh, and then I'm gonna put some holes in it And to do my holes, I just have a little hole punch tool, pretty small in diameter. And I just use it to poke holes in this little area that I created.
All right, so all of my little pieces of clay for making those holes fell into the teapot, which I'll just pick out later. Uh, so now I want to attach my spout. I throw this on the wheel like a little bottle, and I'm going to cut it at an angle. <coughs> and I just use a settling knife to cut it. I just cut off a little bit at a time because I don't want to cut off too much and then I'm really out of luck and I'll have to throw a new spout and it's be a big headache. Alright, so that looks good. That's how I want my angle to be. I'm going to slip and score around this hole and around the base of the spout where I cut. Um, before I do that, I'm just smoothing out my cut with a sponge um, on the inside of the spout because once I attach it, I'm not going to be able to get back in there to do that. So I have a, I've made so many of these teapots, I have a really good idea where this is going to go, but uh, you can just kind of trace around where your spout is going to be to see where you need to be scoring, where it's going to attach. And I just get some slip and I put it on the spout. And then on the body of the teapot. I'm going to attach it. I have a hand on the inside while I am attaching for support. Um, and that way I can make sure that nothing happens to that inside connection. So you can't really see it, but on the inside, I'm moving my hand around where that tea strainer is to apply pressure to the spout where it's connecting. And then on the bottom of the spout, I like to just backfill it just a little bit. So I just make a coil and I just press it underneath and pinch it off. And then I go back in and press that coil in. Um, not really necessary, just an extra step to add more support to the joint. And it kind of makes it look like the spout is kind of just growing out of the body because it kind of um, downplays that seam. So I like how that looks, so that's why I do it. And for the most part right now, I'm just going to let this set up some since I just joined them together. It's still really fresh. Um, so I'm going to let it set up and then I'll mess with it more in a little bit. Okay, so next thing is my lid. 
This is the lid. It's pretty rough looking right now. I have to make these ruffles in it um, when it's still wet and I can bend the clay like that. Um, but after it stiffens up more, I'll go in with a sponge and clean up all that. So this is the lid. I threw, I threw this knob. It's hollow. And I'm just going to attach the knob here. I'm going to cut the base off. Can you guys see that? Let me... So I just use the fettling knife to cut it. It wasn't really a very even cut. So I'm just kind of smushing the base of this right now to get it a little bit flatter so I can attach it. And when I was trimming this lid, I did the same thing. I made a circle mark where the center was so I would know where to attach the knob. So I'm just going to score it and then slip it. Same thing with the bottom of the knob. And then get some slip. And it's the same thing like when I was attaching the spout. My hand is inside the lid pressing and I'm pressing on the top too. Just clean it up a little bit with my sponge. The thing that you really have to remember when you are making hollow knobs is that there needs to be a hole for air to escape when the pot is being fired because if not, the air is just going to get hot and expand and not have anywhere to go and it's going to blow a hole in your piece which would be a total bummer because then you have to start all over. So I just use that same hole tool that I use for the spout and I just come right in the center of the lid on the inside up through the spout. And so I have this small hole inside so that the air from the knob can release itself during firing. And then I just put the lid on. Looks pretty good. Um, so then the next thing will be that I will just attach a handle. Um, I already pulled a handle earlier and it's drying. Um, so once that is dry, I'll attach it. And I have a little bit of stamping to put up here um, since this is a custom piece. But basically in a nutshell, that is how I assemble these Beauty and the Beast teapots. So um, pretty simple. If you have all the pieces already thrown, it doesn't take too long. The throwing of the pieces is probably the, well, I don't know, it all takes a long time, so it's all the longest part. I don't know what I'm talking about. But so thanks for watching. If you have any requests for videos, leave it in the comments. I'm running out of ideas. Help me. Help me think of something. Alright, thanks guys.